PBO proved that that orange jumpsuit, handcuff wearing minister is lying. <laughs> Colleagues, I know you're looking forward to this. Yeah. <laughs> Member for the Electoral District of Toronto, St. Present to you, Don Stewart. After nine years of NDP Liberals, taxes up, costs up, crimes up, times up, and now he wants a 300% carbon tax hike, all the way up to 61 cents a liter. Why not let Canadians choose a common sense Conservative government that will axe the tax, build the homes, fix the budget, and stop the crime now? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. If it were the opposition to spend any time listening to Canadians over the summer, he would have heard that they need solutions. They need answers to the challenges they're facing. That's not what he's offering. Indeed, he doesn't care about Canadians. He just cares about himself and his own political interests. We're going to keep focused on doing the things that he refuses to do, whether it's him voting against dental care, whether it's against him voting against child care, whether it's him voting against a national school food progress, uh, program. We're going to still deliver the things that matter to Canadians, like food in kids' bellies, child care spaces, and supports for seniors to go to the dentist many of them first time in years. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Children are hungrier than ever after nine years of the NDP Liberals. In fact, 25% of them are not getting enough food, and we now know why. A carbon tax fraud has been perpetrated by this NDP Liberal Prime Minister who kept secret Environment Canada documents that showed that the carbon tax was blowing a $25 billion hole in our economy. Our economy per capita is smaller today than it was 10 years ago, during which time the American economy has grown by 19%. Instead of a reckless plan to hike the tax to $0.61 cents a litre, why not allow Canadians to vote to axe the tax? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's a news flash for the Conservative leader. Climate change costs money, and what would cost the most money to Canadians at all is his do-nothing climate plan. Newsflash, when the Toronto subway gets flooded, it costs money. Newsflash, when fire forest fires hit communities across this country, it costs Canadians money to rebuild. When you have droughts that hit farmers and, and agriculturists across this country, it costs money. What doesn't cost money is putting money in 8 out of 10 of the money of, uh, of Canadians' pockets with the Canada Carbon Rebate to support their families and fight climate change. Mr. Speaker, the Prime Minister just proved my point. His tax doesn't stop floods, fires or droughts. <laughs> yeah. All it does is create more poverty. This also from a high-flying, high-taxing, high-carbon hypocrite who flew 92,000 kilometers in a fuel-guzzling tax-funded private jet while he taxes single moms and seniors for heating their homes. Now, carbon tax Carney wants him to put the tax back on home heating oil. Will he reject carbon tax Carney and instead allow Canadians to choose to ax the tax? Mr. Speaker, the Conservative leader doesn't believe in climate change, and that's why he has a do-nothing plan to fight climate change. Right. It would cost Canadians money and challenge our, the future we're building for our kids. Our plan, with a Canada carbon rebate, puts eight more dollars in 8 out of 10 Canadians' pockets right across the country, supports the middle class uh, and people working hard to join it, while delivering the kinds of investments that are going to grow our 
our economy and reduce emissions at the same time. This is a responsible climate plan that fights climate change and supports Canadians. He wants to do nothing. He wants to hurt Canadians. Yeah. The Prime Minister gave the Finance Minister a real vote of confidence last week as he outsourced the job that she was supposed to have been doing for four years and gave it to a man who's not even in the Liberal caucus. First, the Prime Minister tried to fire her in the newspaper, and now she's being shoved aside for carbon tax carney, a man focused on his own profits and his own corporate interests, who was brought in to serve as the de facto finance minister. She's lost her job responsibilities. She's lost her credibility. How long will the phantom finance minister endure this humiliation? Mr. Speaker, I am not going anywhere. on personal mudslinging and attacks rather than to actually talk about the economy. They don't want to talk about inflation because it's been down in the target range for seven months in a row. They don't want to talk about interest rates down three times in a row. All they can do is insult people. I was going to tell her, she just got a demotion and he hired a guy that's not even elected to do her job. Does anyone believe that carbon tax Carney is going to tell the Prime Minister how to help a family afford groceries as the loudest cheerleader for carbon taxes ever? If the Finance Minister isn't completely humiliated by now, can she explain why Canadians should trust a man who is the number one supporter of higher taxes to do her job? Mr. Speaker, we are seeing more clearly than ever that the only thing the Conservatives know how to do is to level personal attacks and personal denigration. They do not care about Canadians, and now they're scared about the facts of our economy. So let me tell you some facts. Inflation in the target range for seven months in a row. Interest rates down three times in a row, and the IMF says we'll have the strongest economic growth in the G7. This summer, after he argued that Atlantic Canadian home heating oil should be carbon taxed, carbon tax loving Mark Carney spent a lovely summer of whimsy having champers at the Royal Box at Wimbledon and rubbing shoulders at a swish cocktail party with a wealthy CEO who yesterday coincidentally got millions of dollars of tax dollars. This is not someone who's in touch with the struggle of average Canadians, but neither is the Prime Minister. Did he push aside his now phantom female cabinet minister because carbon tax loving Mark Carney could get him into fancier parties than she can? Begin by saying it's great to be back in this place. I, uh, I, I really did miss most people on this side. I can't say that I missed all of you that much, but I did miss you a little bit. Um, but what I do want to say is that it's just typical from the Conservatives that when they have an eminent Canadian, someone who has given so much to this country, who doesn't agree with their economic vision or their vision at all in Canada, they attack them. Mr. Speaker, we need to be better than this. We need to support Canadians and be grateful when they put forward for public service. No They're not even letting her answer the question anymore. <laughs> at a time when so many people are struggling to make ends meet and pleading for someone to fix the budget. I'm struggling to find a reason why the Prime Minister would put an out-of-touch elitist, active archpriest of carbon price uh, profiteering who has massive conflicts of interest in charge of the federal budget while shunting aside his female cabinet minister. What a feminist. Why does the now phantom finance minister have to get approval for Canada's fall economic statement from carbon tax, conflict of interest, Mark Carney? (laughs) Mr. Speaker, I'm actually really glad to welcome back to the QP roster the member for Calgary knows. Conservatives continue cartoonish personal attacks, and that is because they are afraid to reveal to Canadians their plan for austerity and cuts, 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 because they know that's not what Canadians want. 
it's curious because we have a fake feminist prime minister who says he's all for women. Taxes are up, costs are up, the economy's in the toilet, and this carbon tax, Mark Carney, is now going to quadruple the carbon tax on all home heating right. across Canada. Yeah. So why is this phantom finance minister okay right. with being publicly humiliated by this fake feminist prime minister? Woo! The question is before this phantom finance minister. She's, she simply has two choices. You know, is she going to join the graveyard of liberal female ministers so yeah. under this fake, fi uh, fake feminist prime minister? Or, you know, like Jody Wilson-Raybould, Jane Philpott, right. or will she continue to be publicly humiliated? Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Mr. Speaker. It's a shame that the NDP's recent hard right turn has taken them down the wrong path. It's too bad that they've caved to the conservative uh, pressure. What this orange jumpsuit wearing, handcuff loving minister doesn't understand is that the PBO proved Canadians pay more into this scam than what they get back. And it's done nothing to stop a single forest fire or flood. It's a scam and nothing else. And the leader of the NDP continues to prop this carbon tax scam up so he can get his $2.2 million pension. That's why he voted in favor of it 24 times. Mr. Speaker, during question period, the member from Calgary Forest Lawn referred to the Minister of Environment as lying. Mr. Speaker, in the past, when members have made such unparliamentary language, they've been forced to apologize and retract that statement, or else they've not been allowed to speak. I would ask that the same uh, that you review that he, in fact, called the minister, said the minister was lying, and ensure that he apologize in this place and retract that statement. The Honourable. The Liberals are unleashing an internet censorship law known as Bill C-23. Even if they weren't, three oceans can be deplatformed at any time for any reason. That's why I want to invite you to join the Three Oceans newsletter. If standing up against mass immigration, excessive taxation, the housing crisis, and the woke agenda is important to you, joining the Three Oceans newsletter is the best move you can make. It's free and it will never be deplatformed. Unlike this channel and other social media accounts, the Three Oceans newsletter is no holds barred and uncensored. Also, you can count on your data being protected and not being monitored like it is on social media. So visit 3oceans.ca. Once again, that's 3oceans.ca to subscribe and beat the woke authorities trying to control the narrative like they control your government.